If I had to choose one laptop right now for normal daily use, it would be the 2020 MacBook Air, but not this one. After two weeks of use and a ton of testing, I changed my mind on this machine and I wish that I ordered a different one. And even though I think this is a good laptop for a ton of people, it could have been great if Apple would have made one small change. I'll explain in just a bit. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. I've read a lot of reviews online and it seems like many people are just glossing over some of the negatives. I don't know why, but I'm gonna be completely honest and give you both the good and the bad and then help you make an informed decision. The 2017 MacBook Air has been one of, if not the best selling MacBook for years now, even after Apple announced the new one. That's because even though it was underpowered and the display was outdated, the price point was low Low, and that's what many people care about the most if they want a basic laptop with Mac OS. The 2020 MacBook Air is finally going to overtake those sales because it's better in almost every way and right now you could buy a brand new one for $950 which is actually the same price as a deeply discounted 2019 model which you would be absolutely crazy to buy since that one is worse in many ways. I own a lot of laptops but being quarantined for over two weeks now and working from home I realized that there were three reasons why I kept picking up the 2020 MacBook Air instead of these others. The first reason was size and weight. At under three pounds with a 13 inch form factor, it is really nice for daily use. The second is the wedge shape. It may seem trivial, but for longer sessions, the tapered edge doesn't dig into my wrists like these other boxy laptops do, including the regular MacBook Pros. The third reason is the keyboard. This new Magic Keyboard really is the best keyboard Apple has ever made and probably my favorite keyboard I've used in any laptop. It is a hybrid of Apple's previous chiclet keys that have decent travel and feel with good reliability and the butterfly keys which replace them that were wider, more stable, and offer more feedback but had poor travel and questionable reliability. To be completely honest, this keyboard feels better than my standalone keyboard for the Mac Pro. It's almost identical but has a bit more feedback which helps for longer typing sessions. The only way to get this keyboard right now is to get a 16 inch MacBook Pro or this new Air, and you can't even compare those due to size and prices. The comparison that's valid is to the base 13 inch MacBook Pro, and after thoroughly testing the new Air, unfortunately, the choice is harder than ever. When Apple launched the new Air, I was extremely excited. They dropped the base price by $100 and also doubled the SSD capacity, which is very unlike Apple, resulting in a $300 lower price. The design stayed the same as did the ports, the webcam, and the display. The speakers are similar, but they're actually slightly quieter, but sound slightly better. Unfortunately, the webcam is still subpar for 2020, but the microphone quality was improved and sounds good. Here is a sample using the 720p webcam from the 2019 MacBook Air. And this is the webcam and microphone quality with the 2020 MacBook Air. The RAM is much faster because of the higher frequencies and being DDR4. But what I was most excited about was the new processors and the graphics, which were the biggest weakness of the previous MacBook Airs. But before I explain why I was let down, let me give a shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace. If you've been thinking about making your own website, now is the perfect time and Squarespace is seriously the best way to go. You can build a great looking website with literally no web making experience like we did. It doesn't matter if you want a portfolio, a blog, e-commerce, or anything else. You just choose a template and customize blocks of text and images. It's incredibly simple, affordable, and ours have been running flawlessly for over two years now, bringing in new clients thanks to its built-in SEO tools. Start your free two-week trial with no credit card required by going to squarespace.com slash maxtech or by using our custom link down below. And when you're ready to launch, save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. The new MacBook Air is the first Mac to feature Intel's 10 gen processors, which are more efficient while offering better performance. And it's the first MacBook Air to have a quad core option. In my first videos on the Air, I was telling everyone to spend the extra $100 to get the quad core i5, which we found out had the same high-end G7 graphics as the i7, which is a $250 upgrade. The base is now a dual core i3 with G4 graphics, but it outperforms the previous dual core i5 by a fair bit, and is the biggest generational leap in performance we've ever seen in a MacBook Air. And that's just looking at the base dual core. If we take a look at the quad core models, we find two things. 
First off, the scores are all over the place, and the second is the i5 and i7 are very close to each other. That is mainly because of thermals, and since the graphics chips are exactly the same, I would not recommend spending the extra for the i7 because the real world performance will be very similar, but more on thermals in just a bit. The quad cores on average score about 40% better than the dual core, and when comparing to the best processors in previous MacBook Airs, the new i5 smokes them. Now for a lot of people that are buying a MacBook Air, maximum performance doesn't matter that much, but what does matter is how snappy it is for normal use, and thanks to the 10th gen CPUs, the new Air is incredible. With single core performance that even beats out my 12 core Mac Pro, 16 inch MacBook Pro, and 13 inch MacBook Pro. Because of this, for normal tasks, it's a joy to use and is incredibly quick with no lag. On the graphics side, the base i3 is almost twice as fast as the previous best, and the quad cores are three times faster. Since macOS apps are using graphics more than ever, having faster graphics also accelerates many tasks and apps. Because of this incredible performance, I expected the new MacBook Air to be an easy choice over the 2019 13-inch MacBook Pro. We have double the storage, a much nicer keyboard, graphics that are three times as fast, at least in raw metal performance. We have a CPU that is close in multi-core score, but much faster in single core. We have better battery life. And on top of that, we have a much lower price. That would make it a no-brainer choice, right? That is what I thought. <laughs> but I was wrong. See, when I started to push the air in heavier tasks that I would typically do on a Pro, it started to fall apart. It is fairly snappy for photo editing, but for heavier brushes or when exporting, the MacBook Pro is still faster. I thought it would be great for video editing and Final Cut, but it definitely performed worse than the 2019 Pro, taking almost twice as long to render a 5 minute 4K project and having more stutters when you're actually editing. Along with that, it ran much hotter and louder when doing all of these tasks, and that is because Apple really dropped the ball with the cooler. The previous Airs did get hot, but not too loud, but now that we have these much more powerful processors, our i5 easily hits 100 degrees Celsius even in some simple tasks. Now Apple doesn't mind them being hot, but if it's running at a constant 100 degrees Celsius, the fans will ramp up until they are annoyingly loud, like when I was watching a 4K YouTube video in Chrome. The same thing can happen if you have multiple apps running in the background, and when I was downloading and installing Fortnite, the CPU was at 100 degrees Celsius with fans spinning high for over an hour. This did not happen with the previous 13-inch MacBook Air, and even though Apple does put fans in these machines, they didn't connect the heatsink to the fan, which really limits its cooling potential. I'm not sure if this is just negligence or if it's intentional so that maybe the MacBook Air doesn't compete with the MacBook Pro, but it is just extremely disappointing for two reasons. The first is that this Air could have been a solid MacBook Pro alternative, but instead, if you push it hard like with Cinebench R20, the CPU performance difference jumps to 65%, and if you want to play some games, it is actually slightly slower instead of being about twice as fast. The second is that people who are not trying to do these tasks will still experience more fan noise and more heat than necessary. And at times during normal use, when their old Mac would be silent, this thing will actually have audible fan noise, especially if they buy the quad core model. Now, if you're somebody that already bought one of these and the fans are annoying you, check out my video on how to lower fan noise and heat after this video. What really frustrates me is that all of this could have been avoided if they would have just spent a few more dollars for a better heatsink, and then this would be one of the best MacBooks ever released. I actually did a video water cooling this thing, and my conclusion was that if Apple put in a heatsink, we would have gotten at least 25% better performance while running cooler and quieter. Because of this, I am no longer recommending most people to spend extra money on a quad core. Yes, it is faster, at least in some tasks, but it's going to be running hotter and also louder than the i3, and then once it heats up and slows down, the performance difference is going to be much smaller. If you need that extra performance, either buy a 13-inch MacBook Pro at a discount, which we'll link to down in the video description, or wait for the 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro, but the hard part is we don't really know when that will be released, and then of course it is going to cost more money as well. With all of that said, I still really like the 2020 MacBook Air, and I would highly recommend the base model for most people that don't need a ton of power. 
The real world battery life is about two hours better than the Pro in my day to day use. It has a sharp, above average display, good speakers, a normal function row of keys with Touch ID, and I know some people prefer that. It has a great trackpad, a top of the line keyboard, it has fast 256 gigs of SSD as the base model, and has performance that does the job well for the majority of normal tasks. And with all of that said, right now you can buy this for just $950, which is a steal for a brand new 2020 MacBook. Now, if Apple still charged about 1300 bucks for this, I wouldn't be as thrilled, but at this price point for the base model, it is a five out of five for me. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. And if you want the best price, check out the links in the video description. If you need to update your website or maybe make a new one, check out Squarespace and click that circle above to subscribe to our channel. If you wanna see how this compares to the 13-inch MacBook Pro, we have a comparison right over there. And also, if you bought one and it's too loud, I have a video on how to get it to run cooler and quieter. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.